Hello everyone, first big video of 2022, and it's one that a lot of you have requested. The map of the island of Sodor, as per the CGI series of Thomas and Friends. This is a video I always intended to make, but I put off because trying to piece together all of the CGI sets was just something that didn't interest me before. But after the Nitrogen video, I've been on a little bit of a CGI Thomas kick lately. So, why not now, right? So let's just get into it. Here is the map. I decided to try something a little different and stylize this map sort of like a subway map, just for fun and to help differentiate it from all the other Sodor maps out there. For the most part, the CGI series seemed to stick to the really crappy Sam Wilkinson map, so some of these things are going to be kind of similar to that. But there is a lot we can ignore on it, and a lot of things we can rearrange to make more sense in the context of the episodes. Since that map is just the Railway Series one with everything spewed onto it, the CGI map is actually closer to the Railway Series map than the Model Series one, shockingly. And that is actually going to make it a hell of a lot easier to piece things together. So, just like the Model Series map video, I've taken every major set from the CGI seasons into consideration. However, there are a couple rules I stuck by when making this. 1. For the most part, I disregarded seasons 13 through 16 for this, because there is no logic to be found in the placement of locations in those episodes. Gordon is seen taking the f***ing express to Misty Island in one of the episodes. I am not about to give myself a migraine trying to figure out all the inconsistencies of those seasons. The writers then didn't care, so why should I, right? We'll be sticking mostly to seasons 17 through 21 and their respective movies, and the Bubba seasons to an extent, if there's anything in them worth pulling from. Stuff from 13 through 16 will only be taken into consideration if events from them are key in 17 through 21 stuff, like Hero of the Rails for example, which is referenced a couple times and used once in a flashback sequence. 2. I am ignoring all maps shown on screen throughout the CGI series. There are multiple times Sir Topham Hatt or someone is looking at a Sodor map in an office, or they show us a map of Sodor in a title sequence. They always differ because the animators use different sources. Sometimes it's the Sam map, sometimes it's just the Railway Series one, or sometimes it's their own thing entirely. They all cannot be accurate together, so I pieced together my map specifically using the logic and context of locations in the episodes. And three. I'm going by the rule of, if it didn't appear or is mentioned in CGI, then I'm not going to mark it. So stuff like Henry's Forest or some of the weird one-off stations like Haltra will not appear here. But I'll of course mention those when we come to them. So just like before, we'll start with the main line. Alright, so as told to us in several episodes, the main line starts at Knapford. However, let's take a look at what's behind it first. Behind Knapford is the shunting yard. Here most of the rolling stock is stored for mainline use. The express coaches are stored here, as are all the other coaches and trucks. Several shunting engines are stationed here to shunt, including Stafford who has a charging pump here. Behind the shunting yard on the other side of the river is Tidmus Sheds, the main sheds for all the mainline engines and the engines on Thomas's branch line. Okay, so let's start our journey. When mainline trains depart Natford, they take the track that goes east. Just like the model series map, I'm going to stick mostly to the rule that three lines is mainline and two is branch lines. That won't always be true because sometimes the sets change their number of tracks depending on the season, but it'll do. Once the line goes out into the country, it passes the halt for the dairy. And after that is Crosby. Crosby has never seen on screen ever in CGI, but it is mentioned by Gordon once in Gordon Runs Dry, when he recollected all the mainline stations in order. Tidmouth, Knapford, Crosby. So it does exist. I'm going to say the washdown is off the mainline near Crosby. I don't like how the main washdown is just off the mainline somewhere, but it makes a little sense that it'd be near a station of some sort. After Crosby is the suspension bridge. The suspension bridge seems to have taken the spot of the viaduct on the model series map. In several episodes, trains travel over the suspension bridge before arriving at Wellsworth. There is a tunnel after the suspension bridge. I don't think it has an official name, so I'll just call it Crosby Tunnel. A junction appears after the tunnel. This is the junction for the main line loop line, 
Let's talk about that for a second. A loop line has to exist in the show. There's a couple pieces of evidence of that. In the Thomas way, Gordon is seen going into Knapford with the Express from the rear entrance. And again in Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. Gordon also recalls Tidmouth as a mainline station in Gordon Runs Dry. Let's see, Tidmouth, Knapford. It is technically a station on the Little Western and not the main line, but the main line does run through it. My explanation for the loop line is that Gordon departs Knapford from the front, but on return journeys, he takes the loop line, goes through Tidmouth, and enters Knapford from the rear. And the more I think about it, perhaps the same is true for the model series. Hmm. That is, of course, not the case for every episode, though. If we travel along the loop line, we'll go under the giant iron bridge, which carries Thomas's branch line over it. The line then curls south, connecting to the Little Western at a junction before the tunnel, through the Tidmouth Tunnel, as shown in The Adventure Begins, through Tidmouth Town Hall, past the sheds and the shunting yard on the upper track, and into Napford. Okay, back to the main line. After the loop, the track crosses the Fenland and soon after enters Wellsworth, aka the junction station for Edward's branch line. There is a weird ass bridge here with tracks on it that I unfortunately cannot explain in any sort of realistic way. Why they added tracks here, I cannot tell you. That was definitely a road bridge in the model series. After Wellsworth is the west junction for Edward's branch, and then the east junction, as shown in Spencer's VIP. The viaduct is after this. The viaduct only appears a couple times in CGI, and only in the early nitrogen seasons. Since the suspension bridge took its original place, and since it doesn't seem to cross any sort of river in CGI, I decided to place it here. The only reason being that Toby and Thomas bring Rocky across it from the rescue center to save James at the Fenland in James to the Rescue. But again, that's a nitrogen episode, so using it for location accuracy is a fool's errand. But, whatever. I'm putting it here. A bit ways after that, there is another junction that goes to the search and rescue center. I'll come back to that in a bit. Gordon's Hill lies ahead. The west side of the hill has the curve at the bottom just before the hill, and you can see the ocean in the distance. The east side has a long stretch of straight track after the descend with mountains in the background. On the other side of the hill is the west junction for the branch line to Ulfstead Castle and Farquhar Quarry. This junction changes appearance a couple times. In King of the Railway, it is directly at the bottom of the hill. In the Afternoon Tea Express, it looks like this. In Love Me Tender, it looks like this, complete with an overhead signal box. Regardless of appearance, it is consistently placed here, after the hill, before Marin. The main line goes under the Ulstead branch and past the east junction for the branch line. This exists so direct trains pulled by Connor and Caitlin going to and from the mainland can get to the castle. Marin lays after this, complete with a bay platform for the branch line trains. There is a junction after Marin that goes up to the Blue Mountain Quarry and Callan Castle. The main line travels over the branch line via a tunnel. James crashed here after losing control of his long train coming down the hill in Philip to the rescue. Kronk is somewhere after this. Again, it's never ever seen on screen, but it is mentioned by Gordon. Wellsworth, Marin, Kronk? So it definitely exists. Can't say the same for Kildane, though. It is never ever mentioned or shown on a poster or anything, so there's no evidence that it exists in the show. It feels wrong to not place it, but for the sake of simplicity, I did not mark it. After Kronk, I placed an east junction for the rescue center again, which I'll explain when we get to that line. There's a nice long stretch of track here before the next station, and it was here Gordon broke down in Gordon Runs Dry. Kelsthorpe Road is the next station, which is what I would say is the junction for the Kirk Ronan branch line. However, nothing on the Kirk Ronan branch ever appears nor is mentioned in the CGI seasons. So for simplicity's sake, I did not show it on the map. Croven's Gate lies ahead, with a junction that allows standard gauge engines up as far as the depot for the Scarlowy Railway. The station isn't far from here, with the Scarlowy Railway connection on the north side. The Sodor Steamworks is also located in Croven's Gate with a standard line track that loops around it. Victor and Kevin work here, and it is here all the engines on Sodor come to when they need repairs. Up the line of ways is Henry's Tunnel, which is indeed on the east side of Sodor in this canon as per the railway series, and not on the west side as in the model series. The junction for the Great Waterton branch isn't far from the tunnel. Thomas and Gordon pass it in the Great Race on route to Vickerstone, 
Like Crosby and Kronk, Great Waterton is never shown on screen in CGI, but it is mentioned once on a loudspeaker in Tale of the Brave. So, it exists. Past the junction for the diesel works and onwards towards Vickerstown. Vickerstown is the end of the main line, and it is here that mainland trains start. On many occasions, Gordon has met flying Scotsmen here. All the mainland engines, such as Samson, Connor, and Caitlin, are always seen traveling through Vickerstown to get to Sodor. The north side tracks of the station curl down to ground level where a goods yard is located. As shown in Journey Beyond Sodor, the station can be seen in the distance from the goods yard. Just beyond Vickerstown is the rolling bridge to the mainland. We've seen the mainland engines like Spencer, Connor and Caitlin, Scotsman, Merlin, and Samson come across it on many, many occasions to get to Sodor. Once you travel over the bridge, you're in mainland territory. The line continues onwards to Barrow, a real-life location and one actually mentioned in the show. Sodor United have a big match today against Barrow. And that concludes the entire mainline in CGI. Let's go back to the west side and cover all the branches in order. We'll start with the westernmost branch first, Duck's Branch Line, aka the Little Western. The Little Western starts at Knapford. This is shown a couple times. In Lost Property, the railway inspectors board Duck's train and he sets off up the branch line through the rear of Knapford. Several episodes also show Daisy bringing passengers to Knapford from Harwick through the rear. The branch travels north past the Shunting Yard and Tidmouth Sheds. This is supported in Pouty James when Duck travels past the sheds on the two-road track with his slipcoaches. Tidmouth, aka the Town Square Station, is the second stop. In Letters to Santa, we see Duck again stop at this station with his slipcoaches. Tidmouth Tunnel is next, and after that is the junction for the mainline loop. Going straight will take us into the second tunnel, which is called Conrad's Bridge on the Sam Wilkinson map. I, I'm not sure if that's a railway series thing or what. And officially onto the branch line. The branch travels uphill a ways before reaching the sea. It then hugs the coast. This is about when I'd say we'd reach the middle station, Haltra. But Haltra is never seen or mentioned in CGI. And it seems Bluff's Cove has taken its place as the middle station on the line. Duck and Oliver pass each other at Bluff's Cove in Blown Away. We keep heading north and will pass through the Fishing Village, a subsidiary to the much larger Arlesboro Harbor a bit further north. The next station is Arlesboro West, the transfer station for the miniature Arlesdale Railway. A ballast chute is here for the Arlesdale to transfer ballast from their wagons to the standard gauge ones. The Arlesdale travels alongside the standard gauge for a little ways before veering off east along the river. The Little Western continues to hug the coast and reaches Arlesboro Harbor, a large fishing port. Captain Callie's galleon ship is preserved here at the Maritime Museum. Skiff is also a part of the museum and gives boat rides to tourists. The harbor is the final stop for duck services, but the line continues north to Harwick, run by Daisy and Ryan. We saw the new extension's construction in Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. I still can't get over how we got a whole movie that took place on the Little Western. Man, 2015 was a wild time. Just north of the harbor is a loop for Duck, Oliver, etc. to turn around to head back down the line. This area later served as the construction yard for the Harwick extension, and is now the home of Ryan and Daisy's shed. North of that is Callie's Cavern, the cave where Captain Callie's hid his ship back in the 16th century. The original tracks of the new branch traveled over it before Thomas fell into the cavern and proved the ground was unsafe. They abandoned the tracks and diverted the new line east over more stable ground. The line travels through some rocky terrain, through a tunnel, cause why not, and eventually along the water again before finally reaching the beach terminus at Harwick, the northernmost station on the island of Sodor. There is a turntable behind the station for engines to turn around on to head back down the line. Dexter, an old coach turned schoolhouse, is also located here beside a siding. And that concludes the Little Western. Let's move on to the next branch line, Thomas's. Unlike the model series map, Thomas's branch line was actually pretty easy to piece together, as they were weirdly consistent with it in CGI, at least in the Brenner seasons. 
However, unlike the model seasons, Thomas's branch is almost consistently two tracks the entire way. CGI was weirdly afraid of single track sets, I can barely think of any. Thomas's line very clearly starts at Knapford. Thomas departs Knapford in like every freaking episode. As shown in Signals Crossed and Thomas and the Emergency Cable, Thomas's branch is the track that jets off to the west from the station. The line loops around down to a halt for Knapford Beach. The beach is only seen in a single episode, a Bubba one surprisingly, where you can see the Isle of Man in the distance across the water. That's really neat attention to detail. The line then continues to curl inland and goes under the main line. Dry Awe is the next station. There's an airfield here, as well as a football field. After that is Ellsbridge. Ellsbridge, like Crosby, like Kronk, like Haltra, is never ever shown in CGI. However, it is mentioned once on a loudspeaker. So, it exists. Unlike the model series, Ellsbridge is not a junction station for the main line. It is just a small through station, as per the books. As it is called Ells Bridge, that must mean the Ells Bridge itself exists, so the line travels over the River Ells right after. Then it goes over the mainline loop via the Big Iron Bridge. In the Lost Puff, Gordon with the Express travels under the bridge via the mainline loop, and Paxton, atop the bridge, spots a cloud above Olvstead Castle in the far distance and races up the line to it. The line continues to climb into the heart of Sodor. The water mill is next, situated on the river, and then Maithwaite. The line travels through farmland now, first passing the windmill and Trotter Pig Farm. A little ways north of that is McColl Farm. Terence is seemingly owned by Farmer McColl in this canon, so we can assume his field is probably around here. The tunnel is north of that, where Terence rescued a stuck Thomas from a snowdrift. Hackenbeck Station would usually be placed after this, but it is never mentioned in CGI ever, so I'm not going to mark it for simplicity's sake. Farquhar is the end of the line, and where Thomas's services terminate. There's a loop behind the station Thomas can run around to face the correct direction when traveling back down the branch. The line does not end here though. It does continue onwards past Arlesdale End, where Toby's Shed is located. The track veers north, past the Y before the old rickety bridge, and onwards to the Farquhar Quarry. Mavis works here, as do Ari and Bert, apparently. Unlike the books and the model series, Farquhar Quarry is regularly accessed by mainline engines, as seen in Henry's Hero, and other episodes. There is a line that reaches it from the Ulfstead branch, which we'll talk more about once we get to that line. With that though, that concludes all of Thomas's branch line. Moving along east, the next line is Edwards. Edward's branch is pretty consistent in CGI as well. The line starts at Wellsworth, where a shed exists in the yard for Edward to stay at, as well as Philip. I have no idea why Philip sleeps at Wellsworth when he works at Knapford, but whatever, fuck it. I hate this so much. The junction for the branch is up the main line and turns south along the peninsula. Shortly after the junction is Regis Scrapyard. The track splits off to a small goods line that leads through Whiff's waste dump. The dump seems to be near the scrapyard, as Scruff makes regularly frequent trains to it. The waste dump also appears to be on a through line, with entrances on both sides. Bill and Ben also brought a wagon of dockyard waste from Brendam to here once. Further down the line is the little halt for the Duke and Duchess of Boxford summer house. Suttery lies after this. The mayor of Sodor lives here. The station is never seen on screen, but it is mentioned and specifically stated to be on Edward's line. And the mayor lives on my branch line near Suttery. After Suttery is the halt for the animal park. Emily delivered a giant globe statue here once. The line goes downhill towards Brendam Docks. Brendam lies beyond that at the tip of the peninsula. The station is never seen, but the docks are shown all the time. Brendam Docks is the main port on Sodor in CGI, unlike Knapford in the early model seasons, or Tidmouth in the books. The Docks is a large loop built atop a man-made concrete dock. Cranky, Carly, and Big Mickey are on the ocean end of it where the ships dock. Porter and Salty work here. The Flying Kipper also starts here. The branch line ends here, but the track does continue along a goods line to the Sodor China Clay Company, 
a huge pit works where clay is dug. The workings is made up of two giant areas connected by a tunnel. Bill, Ben, Timothy, and Mary and the Steam Shovel all live here in their own sheds. Bill and Ben often bring clay to the docks for ships. On to the next branch line, the Search and Rescue Center branch. So after the station for Edwards branch, there is another junction. This one goes along the south coast of Sodor to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. The route starts as two tracks and then becomes singular. Along this route is a narrow tunnel. In this tunnel, Thomas and Duck got Harold stuck. There is another tunnel after this one along the coast that we never see on screen, though it is indirectly mentioned. How do we get to the Search and Rescue Center without going through any tunnels? Pass a junction for the Ulfstead line, the line becomes two tracks again, and finally to the rescue center itself. I always thought the rescue center being on this weird branch line all its own was so dumb. But the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. It makes sense to put your rescue center somewhere in the middle of the island, so it's equal distance to each side, as well as somewhere on land and sea to house characters like both Rocky and Captain. This is the part of the video where I would say the portal to the Misty Island Tunnel is located here. But since we're focusing on mostly just Brenner era seasons, Misty Island isn't really a thing. And thank God. Boy, would I hate having to jump through hoops to try and explain Misty I- Ooh, I know! Going to Misty Island? you, Thomas. Fuck you for making Misty Island canon in the Brenner era. Well, I guess there's no way around it. We have to explain Misty Island now. <sighs> As we all know, Misty Island is connected to Sodor via an old tunnel that goes underwater, and it is here at the rescue center where the portal to it is. Misty Island isn't far south of Sodor as evident by it being visible across the water from Brendam Docks. Misty Island houses a logging railway. So here's my explanation. Way back in the day, before the modern day Northwestern Railway was started, perhaps even before the main line was a thing, a branch line was built to the tunnel, and engines would transport wood to Sodor through it. But as time went on and logging stopped being a vital industry, they stopped running trains and abandoned the tunnel and the line to it entirely. It wasn't until Sir Topham Hatt decided to build a rescue center in this location that the old branch line became of use again. As we saw in Misty Island Rescue when the rescue center was being built, the bridge behind it on the cliffside was also being finished. My headcanon is that the eastern side of the branch line was all new in that movie, and added so the rail characters could access the east of Sodor more directly. The line runs along the coast and then curls up onto the cliffs, over the new bridge, and then back down the hills inland where it connects back up with the main line. There is also a junction that connects the track up to the line to Callan Castle, and goes under the main line via a tunnel. This... this makes sense, right? Is it too much? Yeah, probably. But, whatever. On to the Ulfstead branch. So as I mentioned before, the branch to Ulfstead is off the main line on the other side of Gordon's Hill. As I said earlier, it changes appearance over the seasons. The line can also be accessed via different junctions. We've seen the west side junction a few times, and we know an east junction has to exist because Connor and Caitlin run up to the castle going to and from the mainland on the east side. The line can also be accessed via a track from the rescue center branch that goes over the main line. All the junctions come together and form a two road line up to the castle. The tracks go up a steep hill specifically a two-road one that isn't Gordon's Hill, down again, and then up the hill to the castle. Below the castle is the abandoned coal mine in which Stephen found King Godred's crown. At the castle itself, there's a large yard for incoming tourist trains, as well as Sir Robert Norrenby's estate complete with its own narrow-gauge railway, run by Millie, and a dinosaur park loop separated from the castle by a tunnel. The state can be accessed by the Scarlowy Railway engines via a track to the Blue Mountain Quarry, which I will go into later. It can also be accessed by a track from Thomas's branch line, forming a big loop from the main line. 
The branch line serves a second purpose, and that is being the mainline access to the Farquhar Quarry. On several occasions, notably Henry's Hero, we see big engines collecting trains from the quarry. They travel along this branch if the trains are going to Brendam Docks. The line goes over a gorge, and this bridge was the rickety old bridge. But of course, it collapsed in a Bwaba episode, and in true Bwaba fashion, they replaced it with the stupidest thing imaginable. How does this even work? How does an engine hauling more than a single wagon cross the gorge now? God, I hate Bwaba so much, you all don't even know. But whatever, this is where this bridge, can I even call it a bridge, is placed. In the episode, Toby gets stuck on the side his shed isn't on, making the Y before the bridge on the Farquhar side. In the episode, they also mention that the bridge is at Lower Arlesbruh. There's an emergency at Lower Arlesbruh, and we need your help. But bruh, I, I don't even care. They chose now, in the 24th season, to make that station from season 1 canon again. F*** that. Ugh. On to the Callan Castle branch. So the Callan Castle branch has basically taken the place of the Peel Godred branch on Audrey's map. Peel Godred does exist in CGI, its name has been shown on maps and posters before, but there's never been a standard gauge track shown going to it. So I'm just going to replace it with Callan Castle instead. The branch starts after Marin. We've seen this junction a few times. Paxton is usually on it bringing trucks down from the Blue Mountain Quarry. There's a track from the rescue center that connects to it, going under the main line via a tunnel. The two road branch continues north, climbing into the mountainy area of Sodor. There's a junction to an abandoned track after a tunnel that crosses a river and into a forest. It was in this forest that Hero was left to rust away in. Where does this track go? To an abandoned quarry in the Ulfstead foothills. Diesel tricked Percy and sent him here in wild water rescue. The main branch keeps climbing, crossing the river via a narrow bridge. There's a junction here for the Blue Mountain Quarry. As we all know, the quarry can be accessed by both standard gauge and narrow gauge. Paxton's main job is collecting the trucks of stone and taking them to Brandom Docks via the branch line. The line continues north though, going under the narrow gauge tracks at some point. A learning segment from Blue Mountain Mystery specifically calls out the Coldy Fell Railway and that it is managed by Mr. Percival. We never, ever, ever see the Coldy Fell engines or its railway in the show at any point. But this learning segment seems to confirm the railway exists in this canon. So for the sake of consistency, I've added it, with its transfer station at Kirk Mechan. The line continues into the mountains and terminates at Callan Castle, owned by Lord Callan. Callan Castle is placed in this northern part of Sodor on most official maps. I placed it near Callan on the model series map, since Callan was a stand-in for Arlesbro West in that canon. But since Arlesbro West actually exists in this canon, then I think it's safe to say the castle is here in the north. On to the Scarlowy Railway. So the Scarlowy Railway gets very, very little focus in CGI. The engines appear often at the Blue Mountain Quarry, but the railway itself is only shown in full really in three episodes. I'm going to piece together what I can, knowing what the show has presented us. Okay, so station-wise, we know the line starts at Croven's Gate. That's been seen several times. The Scarlowy Railway is on the north side. As shown in Duncan and the Grumpy Passenger, there is a loop of track here so engines can enter the station in the same direction they depart in. The narrow gauge tracks can also access the steamworks, with a track through the rear. The next location of note is the depot, where the engine sheds are located. There is a standard gauge track that comes up to it and then terminates here. As shown in Duncan the Humbug, the main line goes right through the sheds. Cool. Crosney Kern is next. Once again, it's never ever seen on screen, but it is mentioned by Duncan once. Have you seen the truck at Crossney Curran? Crossing the river and the next stop is the middle station, Glenock. Glenock does actually appear on screen. It's one of the few stations that does. There's a tunnel at some point on the line, so I placed it here before the viaduct. The beautiful viaduct crosses the river. The next stop is Reneus. So. The Scarlowy and Renea stations are never ever seen nor mentioned in CGI. 
However, it is called the Skarlowy Railway, meaning the railway once ran to Skarlowy. So I placed Skarlowy on the map near the lake, as Skarlowy is Sudric for a lake in the woods, and added Reneus too because it felt wrong to have every other station except it. The track loops around the lake and crosses the Castle Causeway on it. Daisy Halt is somewhere on the loop. Beyond that is the junction for the line to the Blue Mountain Quarry. We see Luke access it once with loaded trucks heading down the line. The main line continues to loop back and down a hill towards Reneus. The quarry track continues to climb into the mountains. On this track, Rusty spotted Duncan helping Luke on the hill when the rails were icy. The track climbs into the mountainy terrain, through the valley between Coldy Fell and Shane Dooney, through a tunnel because why not, and terminating at the Blue Mountain Quarry Network. The line, shockingly, does not end here though. While I don't like to think this line is actually a part of the Scarlowy Railway, there is a stretch of track that connects the quarry to Ulfstead Castle. This wasn't some one-off thing either, it appears in multiple episodes. Millie sometimes goes to the quarry to collect stone, or Scarlowy engines will make deliveries to the castle. We never actually see what the line looks like, but it has to cross the river at some point, so there is a bridge. And I like tunnels, so I put a tunnel on it. And there you have it! The Scarlowy Railway in CGI! Only one railway left now. Just like the Scarlowy, the miniature Arlesdale Railway is only shown in a total of three episodes. So we don't have a whole lot to go off of here. Regardless, we are going to try to piece together what we can. The Arlesdale Railway exists to bring ballast from the mines in the hills to the Standard Gauge Railway. We know the little railway starts at Arlesboro West, a transfer point with the Standard Gauge Railway. There is a ballast chute here so that their ballast can be loaded into big trucks. There is also a turntable here, as well as the engine shed. South of the station is a loop line. This is supported by the stretch of miniature track Marion passes before reaching the junction in Lost Treasure, and Mike entering the station from that direction on his return journey in Mike's Whistle. The railway continues along the Little Western for a short ways, and then diverts east once it reaches the harbor and travels along the river. Station-wise, only one other station has been shown on screen, so there's no evidence that the other ones exist. So, as I did with the Coldy Fell, I didn't mark any of them. We do know once the track leaves the river, it passes through a small town area. Perhaps Marthwaite? Then it descends downhill through a foresty area. After the forest is open farmland. The engines will sometimes collect wool from the sheep farmers out here towards the end of the line to take to market. It at last terminates at Arlesdale, a small station with a turntable to turn the engines around on. While that's where the miniature railway ends, the track bed doesn't. So, in the railway series, the Arlesdale is built upon the abandoned track bed of the old Mid Sodor Railway. The old Mid Sodor Railway is never ever mentioned in CGI. However, almost everything supporting it existing does. The Arlesdale Railway, for one, Peter Sam and Sir Handel, Peel Godred, which is shown on a map in Lost Treasure, The Thin and the Fat Clergyman, and Mr. Fergus Duncan. So you know what? Screw it. The Mid-Sodor existed in CGI, and it was located in the same part of Sodor as it was in the books. I've marked abandoned tracks here on the map winding through the Arlesdale Mountains up to Peel Godred. You know, the only thing we really need to seal the deal on the Mid-Sodor's existence in CGI is Duke himself. In the books, Duke's grace is Sir Robert Norrenby, who actually exists in CGI. Wait, wait a minute. The Earl is in ownership of several engines on his estate, including a narrow gauge engine, but weirdly, not Duke. Duke never appears on the Scarlowy Railway in any episode, or is ever mentioned. It's almost like... he doesn't exist there yet. The Arlesdale Railway stories happened before Duke was found in the books, and we got those in CGI. Oh my god. This can only mean one thing. Duke is still in the shed. Duke is still buried in the shed in the CGI canon. They never found him. The stories haven't happened yet. Hey, you two, start digging. That poor guy is still out there and he needs rescuing ASAP. Don't worry, Duke. We're coming to find you. And oh, wait, the show ended. Well, sorry, Duke. Oh, well. 
And that completes the map. So just like before, let's go through a bunch of episodes to see if this map checks out. Gordon runs dry. Gordon starts his journey at Knapford, through Crosby, over the suspension bridge and through the tunnel off screen, then over the Fenland, stops at Wellsworth, past the junctions and over the hill off screen, steams through Marin, through Kronk off screen, and finally comes to a halt in an open stretch of main line. Paxton rescues him, pushes him through Kelstorp Road, and to the steamworks at Krogan's Gate. The only thing weird about this episode is that junction to the Blue Mountain Quarry Gordon meets Paxton at the beginning. This scene occurs before Gordon reaches Wellsworth. Methinks the writer just fudged this so the plot of the story could happen. Henry spots trouble. Henry starts a local train at presumably Knapford, through Crosby off screen, and stops at Wellsworth. Later on in the episode, he is seen approaching Kelstorp Road, where he is spooked by Gordon and reverses. Totally not dangerous at all. Through Kronk off screen, past Paxton at the junction for the Blue Mountain Quarry, through Maron off screen, over Gordon's Hill, albeit I think in the wrong direction, pretty sure that's the west side of the hill, past the junction for Edwards Branch, again in the wrong direction, and coming to a halt at Wellsworth. He was going the wrong way on a couple of sets, but the placements of all the sets are correct. Letters to Santa. Percy collects the mail at all the stations on Thomas's branch and finishes at Dryaw. He sets off for Vickerstown down the branch and then along the main line. He crosses over the suspension bridge and gets stuck in a snowdrift outside the tunnel. The adventure begins. Thomas collects his trucks at Knapford and sets off along the main line. Through Crosby off screen, over the suspension bridge, through Wellsworth, and over Gordon's Hill. He loses control of the trucks and slides down the hill before coming to a stop at Marin. The fastest red engine on Sodor. James leaves the steamworks at Croven's Gate for Knapford, through several stations off screen before coming to Gordon's Hill. His brakes fail and he slides down the hill through Wellsworth and Crosby off screen, screeches through Knapford, through the shunting yard, and crashes into Tidmouth Sheds. Not so slow coaches. Thomas leaves Annie and Clarabel at the shunting yards and heads up his branch line to Farquhar Quarry. Then he comes all the way back down. Annie and Clarabel get accidentally coupled to Caitlin's train, who sets off along the main line. Thomas chases after them, through Knapford and Crosby off screen, and they stop at Wellsworth. They set off again over Gordon's Hill and up the branch line to Ulfstead Castle. Caitlin loops around here, back down the branch line again, and all the way across the island through Victorstown to the mainland over the rolling bridge. Thomas literally forced himself across the entire island non-stop to save Annie and Clarabel, and he would have kept going too if the bridge didn't stop him. God damn. I love this episode. There's so much heart in this one. The extreme lengths Thomas was willing to go for his coaches is just so heartwarming. Slow Stephen. Stephen pulls a rail tour down from Ulfstead Castle to Knapford. He joins at the main line, over the hill and Wellsworth off screen, over the suspension bridge a first time, and arrives at Knapford in the correct direction. He loops around and crosses the suspension bridge a second time before turning down Edwards Branch for Brendam Docks. En route back to Knapford, he crosses the bridge a third time, where he discovers it is collapsing. Love Me Tender Donald and Douglas start clearing snow off the main line at Knapford, through Crosby, Wellsworth, and they arrive at Edwards Junction. Douglas suggests going down the branch to clear the line to the docks, but Donald insists they stick to the main. They come to the second junction to the rescue center. Donald insists they clear a route for the emergency vehicles. They clear the line to the rescue center and then reverse back to the junction. They get stuck behind Toby, who then pulls onto that siding at the bottom of Gordon's Hill that is sometimes there, but not always. Over Gordon's Hill and they arrive at the third junction, the one for Elfstead Castle. Donald and Douglas split ways and Donald continues on his own down the main line. He makes it as far as Croven's Gate before Thomas notices he has Douglas's tender. Donald loops back and goes back through the junction looking for Douglas and misses him. He stops at the washdown to talk to Toby, reverses, presumably switches directions at the Y for the loop line, and heads back to the Ilfstead Junction where he finally finds Douglas, now facing him. Wonderful attention to detail here. Confused Coaches Gordon hauls the express from Vickerstown and Spencer arrives from the mainland. They go through Henry's Tunnel and enter Croven's Gate with the Scarlowy Railway on the correct north side. Later, they set off along the main line, Spencer en route to Callan Castle. They depart Knapford through Crosby off screen, through Wellsworth, through Marin, and then up the two road branch to Callan Castle where the train is finally halted. Sydney sings. Sydney leaves Knapford and travels along the main line to find his job. Through Crosby off screen, of course, and stops at Wellsworth to talk to Gordon. 
He continues on his way, forgets what he's doing, and heads down Edward's branch where he finds himself at the waste dump. He then thinks he's meant to collect an elephant, so he goes through the dump, down the branch to the animal park. Sydney realizes he forgot what his job was, and reverses back up the line to Napford. Spencer's VIP. Spencer comes to Sodor over the rolling bridge, through Victorstown and Crovin's Gate off screen, and then through Kelstorp Road. Through a bunch of stations off screen and approaches the junction for Edward's branch. He accidentally gets diverted along the branch past the animal park, and finally comes to an end at the clay pits. He loops around here and heads back up the branch line towards Napford. Timothy and the Rainbow Truck. Timothy leaves the clay pits in search of Bill and Ben's rainbow truck. He loops around Brendam Docks to search there first, and then heads up Edward's branch line. Past the animal park, through Suttery off screen, then past Boxford Halt, and then through Wellsworth off screen. He makes it all the way to the shunting yard before turning back. Thomas the Babysitter. This is one of the rare episodes that shows the entirety of Thomas's branch line. Thomas starts at Knapford and makes his first stop at Dryaw through Ellsbridge and over the main line off screen and past the water mill. He stops at Maithwaite on the track on the station building side. He continues up the branch to Farquhar, the final stop on his route. He goes around the loop back to Farquhar for his return journey. He correctly goes back through Maithwaite, then Dryaw, and finishes at Napford. Absolutely beautiful. The only thing weird about this one is that it shows Thomas passing the windmill early on before Dryaw. However, this is stock footage from Lost Treasure, so I'm not going to count it. Hero of the Rails. Thomas and Spencer race each other across the island of Sodor, starting at the shunting yard. For some reason that isn't explained, they take different routes? You will each take different tracks round the island. Why? So Spencer takes the main line while Thomas takes his two-road branch line. Of course Spencer is going to win this, his route is so much shorter. Why did they take different routes? Thomas comes down the Ulfstead branch over the two-road hill that isn't Gordon's Hill. His brakes fail, he slides down the other side, past Spencer at the junction for the main line, through Maron off screen, slams into jelly trucks and gets diverted onto the branch towards Callan Castle. He swerves onto abandoned tracks over the river before finally coming to a stop in the forest near Hero's hideout. Thomas the Quarry Engine. Thomas leaves Farquhar with a train of trucks for Brendam Docks. Since they're going to Brendam, he takes the Ulfstead branch route instead of his branch line. He goes over the two-road hill that isn't Gordon's Hill, he loses control of the trucks on it, is sent the wrong way at the junction, and crashes at Marin. Thomas, buddy, time to stop taking heavy trains over hills. This is the third time you've done this. You just can't handle it, man. Emily saves the world. Oh god, this one's going to suck. Emily collects the globe at the shunting yard and goes across the island to the steamworks to show it off. She finds no one, so she loops around through Crovin's Gate and then goes all the way to Marin, entering it from the correct direction. She goes back towards Knapford, then turns left onto the branch line to find Thomas. She passes over the loop line, where the globe falls off her train onto Heroes. We have to just accept Heroes going the wrong way for this to work. Emily finds Thomas on his branch line. The globe gets knocked off Heroes train at a signal box and rolls along the main line through Wellsworth, up Gordon's Hill, and then back down through Wellsworth again past the junction for the loop line, and stopping outside the tunnel. James hits the globe, and it rolls forward through Wellsworth a third time that isn't shown, and down Edwards Branch. Thomas is now on Edwards Branch for some reason. How did he get here? Where is he going? Why is he there? The globe goes past him at a sighting, past the animal park, and finally comes to a stop at Brendam Docks. This episode is just bonkers. Toad and the Whale Oliver and Toad travel down the Little Western going through the fishing village. They travel some ways before going through Bluffs Cove, through Tidmouth off-screen, and ending their journey at Knapford. They set off up the branch again, where they spot the beached whale at Bluffs Cove now going in the opposite direction. They travel up the branch, then loop back to Bluffs Cove with water tankers in the down direction. Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure Sailor John and Skiff steal the treasure chest at Knapford and then escape going through the station's rear. Thomas chases them. They sail past Tidmouth Sheds, through Tidmouth and the tunnel off screen, have a near miss with Gordon at the junction for the loop line, go into the second tunnel, and then up the branch towards Arlesborough, through Bluffs Cove off screen, and then through Arlesborough West, albeit going in the completely wrong direction. The chase ends at Arlesborough Harbor. Duncan and the Grumpy Passenger Duncan meets Reneus at Glenock, who is pulling trucks from the quarry and heading south. Duncan departs Glenock going north up the line. He crosses the causeway on the loop near the lake and traverses the hilly tracks near Reneus. He comes down the line and his journey terminates at Crovin's Gate. 
He does this same journey again later in the episode. The Thomas Way. Okay, here it is. The pain in the ass episode that solidified where a lot of things are on this map. Here we go. Thomas and Duck collect a broken down herald at Callan Castle and travel down the branch towards the rescue center. If they had kept going straight, they'd go right to it as Duck wanted, directly and promptly. They travel over the narrow bridge over the river. Thomas convinces Duck to go to Knapford so they turn at the junction onto the main line. They arrive at Knapford, coming into the station correctly from the south. Gordon arrives with the express via the loop line coming in through the rear entrance. They reverse back and loop around towards the rescue center. Duck takes the most direct route, but doesn't account for the tunnel, where they get Harold stuck. They get Harold out, and now Duck worries about going to the rescue center without going through another tunnel. Thomas knows a way, and takes the cavalcade back the way they came, then over the main line, and to the rescue center, correctly entering it from the northern side. This episode is a goddamn nightmare in terms of location accuracy, but it checks out. <sighs> so, there you have it, folks. The CGI series map of the island of Sodor. Did I forget anything? Like generic countryside mainline set with siding number 473? Yeah, probably, but whatever. I'm sure you all will tell me so in the comments below. The CGI series is such a mess when it comes to consistency. I am aware that not every single episode is going to work perfectly on this map, but I think for the most part this works. The Brenner seasons were pleasantly pretty consistent when it came to routes and orders of locations, but it gets muddied when you take the Nitrogen and Bubba seasons into account. I don't know what's worse, an underwater steam era tunnel to Misty Island or a walking bridge. These are both terrible, and I hate them. Just like before, you can download a high-quality JPEG of this map using the link in the description below. Feel free to do what you want with it. Use it for your own videos, make edits with it, whatever you like. See you all in the next one, folks. Goodbye!